right, we'll call the meeting to order. Well, first on is to approve the agenda. Is there any amendments to the agenda this evening? Or are we good to approve as written? Good to go, as far as I know. Well, move to accept as printed. Okay, motion by Dave. Is... Dave. Second. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. One lady waved your hand. Mm -hmm. Good to go. <clears throat> So first, um, we have an appointment this evening um, with Mike to uh, go through the phase two water line project. So we'll. Uh, I think I can. If you want to share my screen and put that up there. Okay. Remember how to do it now. So. Here it goes. Thinking off to the side. So it ends. Oh, it's too far. There we go. So I think that's as good as it's going to get, Mike. Sorry. Okay. No, not a problem. Um, if it's... I think we, everyone, we have a couple copies of the presentation over yeah. there. Um, so if you want to follow along with with that, um, and I'll I'll just sort of point out where where there's things you might want to look at here. Um, and the same people are here that were here the other okay. day. So if they have any questions, this is a guy to ask. I'll get all the hard questions. That's right. Um, I was holding them for you. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Mike Maynard. Uh, I'm a project engineer at Aldrich and Elliott. We're the engineering firm that's been working with the town for a while on their uh, water system improvements project. Uh, the purpose of this presentation is to give you some basic information about the upcoming bond vote so you can cast an informed uh, informed vote, <laughs> talk about what's included, why the project is necessary, how much is it going to cost, and uh, how can we pay for it. Uh, so the next slide here, uh, just... Yep, sorry. Right, we'll just go down and uh, it's just got some kind of basic information on on the bond vote. This is the second public informational meeting. Uh, the vote itself is at the middle school. Um, it's just part of your your standard town uh, town elections. Um, it's even even though they're water system improvements, all the voters in town um, can vote on it. It's not just uh, for water system users the next slide here um so the next slide it, it talks a little bit about what's included in the project uh it's going to include some water main replacements on uh, sand hill road bicentennial lane highland avenue graham street and crystal drive uh and so part of that is going to include new curb stops and water services up to the edge of the right of way um and then there's a couple other parts of the project uh there's going to be a new water main crossing underneath the railroad a uh, new booster pump station on Crystal Drive, uh, replacement of the Geico Wellhouse, and then refurbishment of the Boulevard water storage tank. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I want to talk about the why the railroad. Yeah, so um, the next one is just a map um, of, of where, um, where these projects are. Um, so you've got down uh, sort of on the lower left, that's where uh, Crystal Drive is. That's up off Royalton Hill Road. Uh, Graham Street's right down there off River Street. Uh, there's a fairly uh, lengthy section of water main um, starting at the uh, intersection of Sand Hill Road and Pleasant Street. Uh, it's going to run all the way up to the Town Highway Garage. It's also going to cover Bicentennial, which is um, just off to the side of that. Um, and then Highland Avenue out on North Street um, from, from North Main Street out to uh, the end end of the road. Um, the, the Boulevard tank, that's the, the round tank that's um, up behind town here. And then the, the Geico well house is the um, well house. It's off in uh, in um, sort of off the side of Pleasant Street there, sort of across from uh, across from the school. Uh, next slide here um, talks a little bit about why uh, these improvements are needed. Um, all these water mains that we're replacing, uh, they're old. Um, they have a tendency to break and leak. 
Uh, Bethel has a disproportionate amount of um, this galvanized steel water main. It dates to the 1950s. Uh, it has a lifespan of 40 to maybe 70 years. So it, you know, it's it, you're right up against the end of its lifespan. It has a tendency to corrode. Um, it produces low quality, lo lousy water quality. Um, and then here's here's a picture of some stuff that was dug up with the last water project. And this these smaller diameter pipes here. That's actually that galvanized um, stuff that you that you've been finding all over town. This this bigger pipe there. That that probably isn't as much of an issue here, but you can see it's it's got some tuberculation on the inside. Um, it's it's rusting, so that's why we're going to be replacing all of that. Um, below that, you'll see there are a couple of uh, requirements from the state of Vermont. Um, they conduct sanitary surveys on water systems. Uh, the last time they did that, they picked out a few a uh, few things that had to happen here in town. One of those is the Crystal Drive booster pump station. That's the highest point in the system. It's got uh, very low water pressure. Um, low water pressure makes the system more vulnerable to contamination. So uh, the state's requiring that we install a new booster pump station there. Uh, the state's also requiring that we replace the Geico well house. Uh, the well itself is fine. Um, it's below the flood elevation. Um, the well itself is down a little bit of a pit. It's been flooded. Um, so, so that has to get replaced as well. Uh, so the next slide, this is a little more um, about that railroad crossing. That's a fairly expensive part of the project. Um, there's actually, there's basically two railroad crossings that connect most of the water system to that area down off of River Street and Royalton Hill Road. Um, one of those, it, it dates to the 1950s or 1960s. It's, it's old six inch AC pipe, it's in poor condition. Um, the other one, which is uh, fairly close to Babe's Bar, uh, that that one is well over 100 years old. The issue with railroad crossings is you have to replace them before they fail um, because you can't just go out and, and dig them up. You know, they're very, very difficult to repair. Um, and that that's a that's a critical link um, in the town's water system. So that kind of loops the system so that if somewhere else failed, we could still get water. Yeah, so extent. if one of those failed, um, that could be valved off. You'd maintain water service to that part of town. Um, that, that uh, That's also what links the well into the rest of town, so that well would still be able to operate. Yep. Uh, the next slide, so these are some pictures of the Boulevard water storage tank. Um, they actually will actually send, um, sometimes they'll send a diver in. Nowadays, they tend to send a little remotely operated submarine in. That tank was built in the 1950s. Uh, as you can see from the pictures, there is some deterioration inside of it. It's not really severe deterioration, um, but it is deterioration we wanna take care of and repair um, because if, if it continued to deteriorate to the point where you'd have to replace that tank, that would be extremely expensive. Um, it's much cheaper to just uh, go in there and fix that concrete now. So these are some, you'll see the first picture, those are some, some cracks um, on the roof of the tank. And then uh, the second picture is the, the interior of the dome, you can see there's some uh, reinforcement starting to show. So we wanna get that covered up uh, before, it, before it corrodes. And then the uh, next slide here. So this is the um, Geico well house. A lot of the equipment in there, it's corroded. Um, this was built, I believe in the 1940s or early 1950s. Uh, it's, been, it's had some flood proofing work done. It was not, the building was not designed to handle flooding. Um, and then there, there's just a lot of structural deterioration. The roof is rotting. Uh, the foundation starting to crack. Um, it's it's not uh, designed to modern code. You want to get the well up out of the flood flood plain so it doesn't fill with water when you when you get a flood. So that we're building that to the 500 year flood. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's going to basically function sort of like a submarine. <laughs> That's it. We'll have our own submarine. <laughs> Um, so the next slide, how much is all of this going to cost? Um, there's a there's a cost summary here. Uh, construction's about 1.8 million. Uh, we've included a 15% construction contingency. Uh, there's some engineering, and then there's um, all of this the, the permitting and, and administrative costs of the project. Uh, that totals about 2.5 million dollars, and that's that's the bond amount um, that's being voted on. So funding opportunities, of course, everyone wants to know how, how to pay for all of this. 
so the, the drinking water state revolving fund, um, th that's a part of the state government that provides funding for these projects. <clears throat> um, they can provide a 40 year loan term at 1.5% interest. Uh, you know, nowadays 1.5% in interest is actually a, a pretty good deal. Um, that saves about a quarter million dollars over the life of the loan. Um, they've put in about $50,000 um, to subsidize some of the planning and engineering work that's being done. Um, and then they're providing $425,000 to remove uh, a bunch of this galvanized steel water main because uh, the galvanized steel, it's, it's known that sometimes it can release lead. Um, so the impact on the current water rates, that's, that's the next slide here. Uh, this is a good time to be doing these kinds of projects. Um, the town recently retired about $30,000 um, in a year in debt service. Um, so that that creates room in the budget um, to do another project. So currently, a typical water system customer pays as hundred. This a residential customer pays about one hundred twenty six dollars per quarter. Um, this project will cost about twenty six dollars per quarter, or about eight eight dollars and seventy one cents uh, per month. Uh, a lot of the the surficial work related to the. Um, uh, roadway repair, um, you know, fire hydrants, uh, stuff you're seeing up on the surface, that's um, going to be funded via property taxes. So for a $250,000 home, um, that would cost about $18.50 per year. Uh, so construction, this uh, last, last, uh, last slide with any text on it. Um, it's planned for summer 2023. That's this summer. You know, I know folks get concerned about construction and, you know, the kind of impacts it has, um, you know, when you're near it. And we, we understand that uh, the project contract documents, they, they do include uh, disincentives to for, for the uh, contractor to, to not run over schedule. Um, you know, it just helps motivate the contractor to move move through the project. And there may be some pieces, Mike and Richard and I met last week, and there may be some pieces like the rehab of the boulevard tank that might fall in the next construction season just because it's going to be hard. Richard can't have, you know, we can't take the pump, you know, one thing offline and do the tank at the same time. And so there's kind of, there's going to be a couple scheduling things. So we may see some of it go into another year. But yeah, these kind of. They depends. typically occur in different parts of town. Yeah. You know, that they'll have to do the, the well house. They're probably not going to do the well house while they're doing the tank. Um, they're yeah. not going to do the crystal drive booster pump station while they're doing the tank. So it, it'll move around. Um, so we may see some pieces that you know, yeah, change a little bit. You know, especially equipment, it's it's difficult to get now. There's been a lot of delays in, in getting that stuff. Um, is there gonna be a new pump in that pump house? Yeah, so that's a good good thing. I actually got a picture of that. Um, so the last two slides, um, I included just two pictures. I think sometimes we can be a little bit cynical um, for about um, you know the state of infrastructure and and all of that. Um, but I, I did just want to. So here's here's a, here's a picture of uh, some wood water water line that was dug up during the last project here on Main Street. So that's you know, 150 years old, I'm pretty sure it was out of service at that point. Yeah. It, <laughs> it just, much. you know, sort of goes to show how, how long lived this stuff is, you know, mm -hmm. this is, this is something once it's been replaced, it's not something that you have to replace for another generation plus. And then the second, so this is the uh, discharge head in the Geico well house. The, the pump was removed and had some refurbishment done on the, the lower part of the pump. Um, we call that the wet end. Um, that was done maybe 10 years ago or so. Um, th this yeah. discharge head, that's the top end of the pump. Um, that's original to um, to this well. So that was the 1950s, if I'm not mistaken. I actually called up this company and asked them about a new one and they can make a new one. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's, that's pretty cool just how long some of this stuff lasts. So, you know, this is a uh, definitely a long-term investment um, here. And I, if anyone has any questions, I'm um, happy, to, happy to answer them. If you came in and you didn't see it, there is a sign-in sheet. So just hit it on the way out. It's fine. Thanks. It goes on the doorway. <clears throat> when you replace that pump at the Geico house, it won't be the same GPM and horsepower. Will it be 
to be a more efficient electric motor on it or something? Uh, or nope, it's pretty much the same pump. Um, it's it you know just needs to do what what it needs to do now for for a system like you have here. There isn't a huge benefit in um in anything really sophisticated. All it does is pump full force until it fills a tank. Yeah, um, you know, it's especially with some of the costs of like more sophisticated controls now. Um, a lot of that stuff will be easier to add in the future though. So. <clears throat> so one of the things that came to light today is that we did not meet our bond notification requirements. So while we will vote at town meeting on the bond, we're going to have to vote again on April 18th. So I spoke to the lawyer today, Stitzel Page and Fletcher, and Bob said, basically just for lack of a better word, consider our March vote. We still encourage everybody to vote. It's just going to be more of a consensus. Informational. I mean, it's going to give us an idea where we stand at, you know, with the project. And then the fastest I can turn it around is April 18th. I have an email out to the school right now. So to let us see if they'll let us use the middle school, um, excuse me, the middle school entrance. And um, so to where we normally vote anyways. So basically this is just gonna be kind of a referendum. And um, so what, but he just said, move forward with it. There's no reason not to We'll get an idea. How do we do? Have we put it in town meeting? We've done a mailer, we've done everything <laughs> except hit the two dates in the newspaper. So we hit one of the three required. So what he's saying is just move forward with it and just see, he goes, then you'll have an idea, you know, did you overwhelming support? And then what we're going to do is create a flyer so that when people come in to vote, because you won't be just voting the um, bond, you'll be voting for cannabis as well. That's the second article that's on that ballot. So what we do is create a sheet that will be at the exit. So you come in, your name, you vote, and at the exit, when you hand in your ballot, there's going to be a, a stack there that says, we didn't hit the dates for the bond informational for the notification requirements, so we legally can't sell the bonds. It'll create a legal headache down the road. So what we'll do is we're going to revote on April 18th right here at 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and also list the ways that you can request an absentee ballot. It has to be Australian ballot because it's a bond vote. It's going to be right. warned as a special town meeting. And on March 13th, you guys will sign, uh, well, not Paul, but the rest of you and someone else will sign all the bond. We'll announce the results of the original bond vote because it might swing the results of the second bond vote. I don't know. I guess I'll have to. I don't. I mean, it's all public information. So and at that point, it's really just a. It's it's just kind of an advisory at that point. We'll have an idea of how well we did, I guess, getting the information out. And then it gives us time to answer any more questions. But at that point, so when people vote, they will leave with the information that says what they can do. So we will say at town meeting that it's an, basically at this point, for lack of a better phrase, it's an advisory vote because we didn't get hit the notification deadlines per statute. So um, it happens, I guess. And um, so we'll still vote it. That gives us, I called Mike. The lawyer was the first call. Mike was the second call, then, then Richard, and uh, to get all of our ducks in a row to see how fast I could turn it around. There's a 30-day, so many days you have, so Tuesday the 18th is going to be as fast as we could turn it around because I didn't want it to delay construction, going out to bid, and all that. So um, that's where we stand. So I still encourage people to vote. You got to vote for cannabis anyway, so you might as well check the box. Yes or no on water, and um, that's what we'll do. I won't do another mailer to the house, that sort of thing. We've really gotten all the information out to, about the bond, but we certainly will do all the newspaper notifications, front porch form, Facebook, all the other ways that we notify people as well. So, um, so just a technical glitch. Do we have to do informational meetings again within you a certain will, time? You will do one informational meeting and it will be the Monday, I believe it's the Monday prior. So you will do one informational just like this. Um, you only have to do one reason we do multiple for town meeting is because we want to answer budget questions, et cetera. And we only have to technically do one bond informational. Um, so it'll be, you have to do it within 10 days of the, um, election. So Lindley, do you have a question? Yeah. 
No, just to say that Owen has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Owen. That's okay. Thanks, Lindley. Um, thank you, Mike. Uh, my name is Owen. I'm one of the owners of Babe's Bar. And I just had a question about um, if you know the timeline for that section of repair that's under the railroad, just because it's definitely going to impact our event planning and stuff for the summer. Sure, absolutely. I I don't know exactly when that's gonna when that's gonna happen. That's a, a pretty specialized type of construction work that has to happen there. So it, it's dependent on on you know the right subcontractor being available at that particular time. But we'll we can coordinate a, a particular time to get that work done. Um, you know that 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 the particular time when that's done hasn't been specified yet. Okay. Yeah, you you can coordinate that. To let Therese know, and and she'll, we'll, we'll we can work that that out. Yeah. Okay. I think we want to make it as easy as possible for you all, but we also have a bunch of events we usually do in the summer. So we just the sooner we know, the better. But I also understand it's kind of a moving target right now. No, this is good to know. I think that. Um... I would think that because that's a directional bore, so that's a sleeve that could be tough to get those materials. It might be something that we do, you know, later in the fall or the spring, but we'll try to work it out, Owen. If, you know, once we, once the bond vote passes and we move forward and we go out to bid and we have a little more information, Owen, I'll reach out to you and you and I can always sit down and you can give me the dates that you have stuff and we'll, we'll do our best to not inconvenience you too bad. Okay. Thank you. Of course. And and once it's bid, Owen, there'll be, you know, whoever the contractors that gets it, they'll have to submit a schedule. Um, and, you know, usually inside that schedule will give you a fair amount of a warning of, of when that activity may take place. Um, okay. So okay. There, there's ample, well, when I say ample. Well, there should be some wiggle room to, to help, um, you know, with your schedule. Yeah. And do you expect, Mike, I don't know if you have a sort of visual of what this will entail, but I'm I'm guessing that the driveway, the southern driveway of our parking lot will be inaccessible. So right now it's pretty much used by everybody as a turnaround, um, but I'm thinking that it will kind of be a blocked parking lot for some period of time, right? Yeah, they need to connect. There's a, a stub, a water main stub there they have to connect right. to. So they're, right. they're going to have to reach right up that. Um, and then okay. most of Actual construction work there will be occurring sort of in the southern end of the parking lot. If there's a flatter area. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So we're also working. I have two zoning permits that are going to go in front of the um, development review board because it's municipal. We're automatically kicked to the DRB, which makes sense. Everybody should know what we're up to. So we'll need a zoning permit to build the Crystal Drive pump station, and we need a zoning permit to Geico. do the um, well head. Um, you know, to do the Geico pump house. Just so um, those permits are done. Kelly has those, and I believe we're set for. March 21st, we meet all the setbacks and everything. And, um, but still we're just like everybody else, we have to go through the process. So the zoning permits are out and I still, the last thing I have to do, I have all the easements. Um, the last thing I have to do is a driveway, um, permit to into crystal drive. But once the snow melts, I'll go up with Morgan and he'll tell me what we need for culvert, whatever we need to put in. So, well, we're following all the rules. So. I don't know. You have to ask Mike. I don't think your three phase aren't really big. They're pretty modest. Yeah. Regarding the replacement of the pipe going across the River Street Bridge or under it, um, is that what kind of delays can residents, which I am one of on that side of the bridge, uh, expect for? Um, so you're you're referring to the one going under the under the railroad tracks. Well, That's at Babes and across oh. the across the river. Well, Not that, that um, already buried. Yeah, the that's that's. Um, it it's going to stop on the other side of the railroad tracks. So unless you're 
Okay, so it's not because that's uh, pretty new. The right? section so under the river years, was like done less than ten years, two thousand, a little, I think, two thousand eight, almost roughly. Uh, yeah. Yep. Right. I mean, worst case scenario, you'd be looking at you know some one way traffic, you know, during the day. Yeah, I'm thinking more on water service delays. Oh yeah, okay. no, I. You you'll probably you, there will be a few brief shutdowns. Yeah, but not. Mm -hmm. But not not nothing prolonged yeah usually we try to keep the old line in service and then um you know wait and then tight and the only place we may not be able to do that possibly is sand hill just because of the way that the water versus storm water versus sewer is on that road that may be we're gonna have to do um temporary water to some places on sand hill but i think that was the only location that we we're gonna need to run temporary water wasn't it yeah that that was the plan yeah so but other than that it should be you know it'll be less invasive as in we won't be digging up main street so <laughs> which will be nice everybody will be happy about that it's a much easier much it's a much easier project in the yeah. street um just without with less infrastructure in the way um that that's yeah. going to be very very nice and rick is maybe one of the ones where we're not sure where his shutoff is he may be actually on Graham. Yeah, but that's pretty a pretty new shutoff. Is it? Oh, good. Yeah, it's then it's not you. We were visible. looking at. We were there's a couple we weren't sure, and yeah. we're like, oh, I bet because someone said there's one that comes away out. We're like, oh, I bet that's Rick Benson. <laughs> well, comes off from Graham. Yep. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Then yeah. that was you. We were talking about that the other day when we met. Richard was like, I think that. And we're like, we think that's Rick Benson. <laughs> yep. No oh, good. Yeah. So there was a couple there, but. Any other questions, uh, the board or public? Don't see anything online. No. So hearing none, I guess you're off the hook, Mike. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, no, thanks for coming down. I put your other stuff in your over there on the chair. <laughs> exactly all right well thank you for coming this evening yeah thank you everyone yeah thanks Mike. all right so then the uh the only thing else that we had um for discussion this evening is to go over the the town meeting warning again as well as um the highlights of the of the budget um right um, yeah, we'll get to that. So, so we'll just go through those pieces. So, if there's anything that's not a part of what we're going to finish up tonight, then, then now would be the time in public comment to bring that up. Oh, uh, Owen has his hand raised. Hi again, <laughs> it's Owen. I'm putting on a different hat. Um, I just wanted to um, invite you all. I think you received an email, but since there's other community members there, um, I wanted to invite everyone to two trainings that the Equity and Inclusion Committee are doing at, as a part of Bethel University. Um, this is really connected to our founding purpose of offering education and training to foster a more inclusive community for everyone. Um, so those two trainings are um, the first one is March 14th. It's going to be on Zoom in the evening, and that's about Juneteenth and the history of slavery in Vermont. Um, so we're really going to be talking um, very much locally about our state and its connection to um, slavery. And then on March 20th, um, we're going to have an in-person training at Town Hall at 6.30 p.m., and that's going to be about supporting transgender and non-binary people. I think both of these topics we've been hearing a lot about in the last year. Um, and as you know, last year, our state went through the arduous process of amending its constitution to finally remove slavery from the constitution. And we're also hearing a lot about transgender issues, especially in the school system. So hopefully this will be really good opportunities for us to learn together and have productive dialogue. And it would be awesome to see some select board members at both of them. Um, and then just on behalf of the EIC, I also wanted to acknowledge that it is Paul's last select board meeting and that we really appreciate you, Paul, and it's been really awesome to work with you and we look forward to continuing to work with you um, in other ways moving forward. That's all from me. Thank you. 
So when I did print out your email and gave the select board a hard copy, and since Lindley's not here, I took a picture of it and sent it to her. So they did get the email plus um, copies of it again tonight. So as promised, well, we got it handed out. Thank you. So, yeah, of oh, and I should, I forgot to mention that you do need to register for those events. Um, so click on the link. And if you're, if you don't have that in front of you, if you're in the audience, you can go on the Bethel University website. There's a bunch of other awesome stuff happening, but you do need to pre-register for those events. So it's not a walk-in type of situation. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anybody in person? All right. So we'll move on from public comment and we will go to the town meeting warning first. Um, so Jean and uh, Lindley weren't here last time. So we just volunteered you for everything that we needed yeah. to fill in the day. So, yeah. um, so you guys are all set to make um, a few different speeches on town meeting day. <clears throat> um, but um, so the, the warning, we'll just kind of go through it um, briefly again. Um, you know, the first three is to elect the moderator, the clerk, and the treasurer. Um, and then um, four and five is to elect um, select board member. Um, first one is the seat that Paul currently has, and the second one is the seat that I currently have. So um, so those will be the two uh, select board member um, pieces. And then six and seven are listers. The um, number six, currently um, Pam was helping um, in that capacity this year as an appointee, um, that will be vacated. So there'll be one year left of that three-year term. And then Judy, who is running for hers again, would be the the um, the three-year term yep. one. Um, and then we have two, two for the trustee of public funds. The, um, I believe Sandy is running, re-running for her three-year term and then and then the one that's vacant, um, Paul's, there'll be a one-year balance of the three-year term for the one that Paul is in, which I think I remember right, Paul, you said there was somebody that was running? Yeah. Yeah, for I that. I believe so. I haven't heard definitely, but. Um, we'll find out. <laughs> will, will those elections be held for the board? Will they be held concurrently or consecutively? Consecutive, just like yep. they're numbered here. Okay. Yeah. So Paul's would be first. Then Chris will be second. Yep. Yep. Just, so we'll, Rick will do it the same way. It's on the morning. Yeah. I just. And. And then number ten on the warning is the the budget. So um, I'll talk about the budget when we get to ten, as we talked about last time. And 11 is the the extra appropriation for the library. Yep. And Bennett Law and Lisa Campbell both will be doing that one, Rick. Yep. We did confirm. And then number 12 is, is the recreational um, facility improvement fund to add for the skateboard park. So there was um, the additional resources that they need for the skateboard park which ellie said that she was going to talk in regards to article 12. I, I had a question about that she used the word presentation she said she's done a presentation before do they do i've never seen that do they do more than just talk about it or Hi. okay i wasn't sure i didn't know i didn't i've never they have in the past okay yeah Corey yeah. Did. that's right mm -hmm. or use the boards and you know Okay. Maps and charts and yeah. stuff. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I I didn't know. Way back when. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, I wasn't sure. I've never. Seen, so I wasn't. It sure. sounded like when she was here that they were going to do something at their table. Yeah. Um, about yeah. it, and then I'm I'm sure that that I don't know if she'll have any visual aids when she gets up to talk, but I don't know. She'll come prepared. So. Um, and then we had the um. The human services piece for number 13 that Paul said that he would talk to. And 14 is White River Valley Ambulance. And that is going to be Dave Aldrighetti. I did confirm with him. And he said that he had 
he received, he got extra information from Matt Parrish. So he's prepared to speak about that. We, you know, it kind of talked about what we were all looking at anyways with their budget, the staffing, the insurance and those sort of things. But he also has call information and sheets. So he's, he's prepared to, to do that. And 15 is the, the extra um, for the Playhouse Theater that was petitioned. And that will be Bennett Law. He did agree. I emailed him and he said he'd be happy to speak about that. Number 16 is collecting our taxes. We'll need a new speaker on that. Hopefully not. <laughs> Find where the remainder of my warning went here. That might have been the other piece of time. I yeah, forgot. Sure. Um, 17. Uh, well, then we get into um, the Australian ballot um, item, which is if if we want to elect town officers Australian ballot wise going forward. So that is. We have Rick next to it. I think just to explain how it works as far as. You know, people may be confused thinking that they're going to vote right then and then they're going to, you know, that it won't be effective till next year. But <laughs> well, I, well, I think we also talked about that some of the confusion that, well, had maybe not as much now, but we definitely did last year when we yeah. were talking about it was, you know, that it would just be for electing <laughs> the officers that are on the warning. So that would be so for this warning, anyways, it would be the two select board members, it would be the two lister um, positions. And I believe it would be the two public trustee of fund mm -hmm. positions. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Moderator. Moderator, Moderator yep. treasurer. Yeah. Yep. Clerk. Yep. Yeah. All clerk. But yeah. But they're gonna go that way too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All the that'd be one through so it'd be one, one, one through nine. Through nine. nine. Now, if that were to happen, Australian ballot, what would happen at next year's town meeting as far as having Rick be the moderator? He'd, he'd still be the moderator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be the moderator until, until the new vote. Right. Okay. Yep. He'll be the moderator forever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make that a rule. Didn't didn't work with Carol. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and then number eighteen was to, um, if we wanted, so I guess we were talking about instead of printing and send, um, uh, town meeting day town report report to everybody that we would, um deliver a postcard system where everybody would get a postcard then they could come in and pick it up at at um, certain locations so it could be the post office the town manager's office those mm -hmm. places um if we're going to change our delivery method for distributing the town report then we have to do that by a vote um so it's uh an opportunity for us to potentially save some money by printing less um as well as you know save on paper and things like that. So right now we yeah. we print 700 and something reports yeah. a year yeah. that, you know, there's probably, there's probably two or 300 of them that kind of go to waste. Um, so we're just trying to cut down and see if people are interested in that. Um, who do you want to speak on that? I mean, who's going to do that? Dave, Jean, who wants to talk about 18? In case any questions come up. I, don't know. I mean, we could probably just direct them to the it's like board if yeah we can if a question yeah. comes. We only printed seven hundred eighty of these this year. I think we printed seven twenty five. So who who got one? All of the um, it, all, it goes to all of the registered voters that aren't challenged, and anyone who owns property. We merge the two lists, so basically it ends up going like one per household, basically, and. Um, so by the time you print them, mail them, you know, there's a significant cost when, you know, 
you and I both know that if we just printed a little pamphlet that said who was delinquent, who was born, married, and passed away, we, you know, we, we, I think that's information a lot of people look for. And then we see a bunch of them at the transfer station yeah. right after. So this way you can request them. It's online. And um, so you can see it online. And then also if people want hard copies or if they want one mailed to us, they'll just call us and we'll mail them one. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could just if there is if there are any questions, I think we can just have them directed to the select board table okay. and somebody, you know, right. Teresa, myself, or somebody else can answer those yeah. questions. All right, I wasn't sure. Um, I've been asked a couple of times um, if somebody has a home in Bethel and pays taxes in Bethel, but they're like say they have another place in another state, are they able to vote at the town meeting as a resident of Bethel? No, it depends on they're, where they've right, established their residency. At. Yeah, you have to establish if, your residency here because if they're all say, just we'll make it up, say they're already registered to vote in New York because yeah. that's where they live the majority of the year and that's their main residence, they're already registered to vote in New York, okay. so they can't vote here. Okay, because some people had confusion, they had talked to somebody and they're like, as far as a town meeting goes for just voting for the town, anybody that's a resident in this town can vote at town meeting. No. And I, my thought was no, because somebody else right. said, well, I have property in Royalton and I have property in Bethel. And I was told I can vote at both town meetings. And yeah. like, no, they yeah. were, they were given bad advice. Yeah, you, have you have to be a have registered, registered voter to that town. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And that most, was my yeah. thought. And they're like, no, I think for the town meeting, since it's only the town, you know, anybody that has a yeah. here. And they'll find out because as soon as they come in, they're going to get checked <laughs> off the checklist and given a sticker. And I mean, it is same day yeah. voter registration, but with that comes mail they have to prove that their residency whether it's a mail driver's license and actually someone called the office today and pam went through the rules with them okay. but yeah just because they have a second home here doesn't they, mean they can participate in the mm -hmm. meeting as a visitor but right. they can't yep. vote on any yeah um just can't vote on any of their any, any of the yeah, topics yeah they pretty much said no 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 that's not what we heard yeah. so i figured yeah, i'd bring it up as a visitor right yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then if you someone pass, say someone wants to pass a paper ballot, then I asked Pam this question today, then everybody who comes up, you know, will have a sticker on, like mine says visitor, but, you know, Rick's obviously says his name and you know he's a resident by the I sticker. Know, huh? <laughs> I don't know what it says. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's the case, right? Did I explain that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was asking Pam today. And that, that is a question that comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. People People do get very confused on if I own property in a town, even though I don't use that as my primary residency, can I vote? And Technically, I can't really speak unless the body is okay with it. Right. That's right. So right. If, yeah. if there's no, usually I say if there's no objection, mm -hmm. we'll let so-and-so speak on whatever. Yep. Yeah. And one more question. Someone asked me a couple of weeks ago if... Um, the town, the dedicated town report for Tim and Carl will be read aloud at the beginning of the meeting. I, you know, I, I don't know because apparently I found this out not since I've been here, but in the past. Well, when Jean, when it was, when it was given to Jean, I think it was flowers and a little presentation, right, for Jean. Um, and then we have had COVID, and so I'm not sure we've had a. Well, we don't. I don't know how we read that. Okay, I don't know. I have been asked to read. Uh, uh, Kelly asked me to read something, um, in particular to Carl, I believe. Okay, I don't know. Um, but I'm not sure if it's what was written in here, and I need to almost have to check with her on that. Yeah, it was for both. Is that so that something? that page? That what you asked me? How do you normally acknowledge who's been? We, we don't. We've yeah, never I read it aloud. Just in the in the book, and people. See and that's it. it. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. I wasn't sure. I know Carol. He got his in the mail, and he was tickled that he sent you a card, and yeah. then he yeah. passed away shortly after. But um, he just got his kind of as a surprise, and of course, the families were notified, um, in advance, so the right. families know that right. that they were the. That is yeah, and I think Jean's thing was just an appreciation oh, for her yeah. service. Yeah, okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. 20 whatever years. Yeah. Yeah. Like 30 years. 47, 47 years. Yeah, yeah, this one I think they, well, it was Kelly as well. Yeah. Because they both passed away if they yeah. would be recognized because they were well, deceased. It could be that maybe 
Rick just makes a statement. It was dedicated to him. He doesn't have to read the whole yeah. thing. It's up to you guys what they want. I don't, I don't think <laughs> you have to be careful with that. Yeah. Because next year you don't do it. You start picking and choosing and you're doing yep. it for yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 yeah, so my so point. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Jean may have been just an appreciation and just yeah. coincidentally she had that. That's the only time I've mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Well good. That's helpful. That's good. Um and then we have the Australian ballot pieces, which the um the first part, um, the Australian ballot pieces is, is um, to allow the uh, retail sale of cannabis in in the commercial district of of Bethel. <clears throat> um, so again, and that one, as we talked about last time, we may have may have well, not may. There's probably a good chance that we'll, there's going to be some confusion on what that means. So. Yeah. So when it comes to Excuse me. the growing of marijuana, the state is the governing body of that. So the town has no right. no influence over that. That permit process that stuns through the state. Um, now, when it comes to the retail sales of it, then the town has the option to weigh in on that. So, so we had, uh, I believe they. I believe it was three years ago. Three years ago is when Montpelier had had put retail sale of cannabis um, out there for towns to vote on. And over the last two years, we we have chose not to vote um, on the article just because we hadn't had any interest in it for the most part. And there there is a retailer that's interested in putting us um, a retail cannabis um, storefront in uh, in the village. So um, what that means is. Um, if it does go through, so retail sales of cannabis has to be done inside um, what is your commercial district anyways. So it'd have to be done where, where retail shops are currently. You can't have it. I'll make it up. Can't have it on Gillybrook Road on a, a, a house front store type thing. It has to be, be in where um, things are marked as um, where it's already uh, for retail. Yeah. Right. For retail sales. Um, the, the piece that is kind of confusing um, and a little bit powerless on the town's end of thing is if the town decided to allow retail sale of cannabis. So let's say um, every people vote in favor of this year and a retail storefront opens. And then let's say next year, it's, you know, uh, the, the town's people um, don't want retail sales of cannabis and put it back on the warning or petition to have mm -hmm. it on the warning and it's voted down, let's say this time, the retail store that did open, as long as they remain open, would be grandfather clause into selling of, of cannabis. So it's not just because the town decides that we want to take it back. Um, if there is an establishment, um, then they still um, have the rights to sell it. Yeah. So that's kind of what it means. Um, we, the, my, oh, the other question was the Owen had last time, I think was about in relation to the oh, school. Yeah. And we did find the answer to that. Yeah. And there's, there is language about how many feet within a school it can be because technically our, our commercial district goes all the way out to mm -hmm. the school. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has to be, you know, outside so many feet of uh, a school or certain other established. So a retail shop has to be within, you know, has to be three to 500 feet, whatever. I don't have the rule in front of me, but yet they could cultivate cannabis there. So they can't sell it, but they can grow it within yeah. near the school. So we had, I'd put together um basically a, a page and a half. We talked about doing a statement about cannabis, but there's so much there. I ended up doing like yeah, a page it's... and a half kind of frequently asked questions. I gave a copy to Rick and um, I don't know if you've looked at yours yet that I sent you, yeah. but <clears throat> kind of defined what a, retailer is you know they you know what maybe integrated license so to try to answer some of the questions um for people because i don't know how deep the questions can get because it's discussion only then they're going to go out and vote so mm -hmm. <clears throat> i mean i have a feeling there's going to be several questions um yeah and i think i think probably the most common one is going to be retail sales versus grow i think that it's some of the um feedback that I have gotten here yeah. over the last couple months that we've talked about it is yeah. the confusion of that. And we, yeah. And it talks uh, about the permit fees and, and stuff. So 
it is a <clears throat> can be a complicated issue. So we'll have some information and I'm also going to bring there's a, a document that the state cannabis control board put out mm -hmm. so that if someone asks a question that's not on our frequently asked questions list, we can kind of try to scurry through to try to find them an answer. So I'm thinking that <clears throat> when we when we talk about that, I, that item anyways, is just read it as is and and if we do get some questions that come from the audience, then I guess Therese and myself could have the yeah the, list. the frequently asked question list in front of us to help answer any of those questions. Um, yeah, and hopefully people do research on their own too. If they have specific questions or concerns, they can go to the state's you know cannabis control board and website and look. And looks like Owen has his hand up. Hi again. <laughs> um, is there any language that you saw about the distance that a cannabis retailer needs to be from uh, either a class a class one, two, or three liquor license? No, there's nothing. Okay, I didn't. I didn't see anything. I only saw what it said was between the school, a school mm -hmm. zone, and and um, but I didn't see anything about that. The distance between okay. obviously they can't. It's just like they can't anyone can't have an open container on main street they can't smoke on main street either and it talks about that a little bit in there about what the the state rules are regarding cannabis do we have um <clears throat> what what might be helpful is if we had i don't know if we could print um print some information on you know like the frequently asked questions question and leave list, it at the check-in leave list. it at the check-in or somewhere around there and maybe is that appropriate Right. Yeah. Like, and then I'm thinking anything informational, okay. you know, because you always end up talking about the things that are at at yep. the tables. So you could say, you know, when you come in, don't forget that to pick up this, this and that, you know, and you could mention that what they are and, you know, that there's a frequently asked question questionnaire in regards to the cannabis retail sales one. So hopefully that. Okay. Yeah, and it answer starts, some yeah. of those questions that people might have and it's just an outline of the law taken directly right. from i cut and pasted right from the control board mm -hmm. so obviously we're not saying we have no authority to say vote yes or no right. certainly just to provide people the information right. so yep. um and there's a lot of information that i didn't cover i just tried to hit the high points of mm -hmm. um you know what maybe might be asked the most and then in an article two um on the australian bat would would be yep. in regards to the water line phase two project which um i would say at this point we sh it'll we'll make a statement yeah they'll we or you or i can okay i will or i'll do it okay and oh and i'm gonna look through that cannabis control board thing for you so you're one any distance between class one two or three liquor license places was that your question yeah <clears throat> okay i'll look and see if i find something or i'll email you either way Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's fine. So okay. that is the warning in a nutshell. Um, what, your agenda. Can I a little follow-up question on town meeting in general? Do you know if um, Seth is, do we have anything going on with the Yep, he, um, we were just reading, I just thought we were following up on that question today. Yep, Pam has Facebook and he has his request in Ellis to take the morning off, I guess, so that he can do that. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, Seth. Seth Stoddard. 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 Okay, I'm just wondering, so the first two events. Those who were talking about. Oh, oh, Seth's yeah. daughter. Thank yeah, you. yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, and Pam will take minutes at this, at town meeting. Right. Pam does the minutes there, and we don't, we won't need Orca, so. Um, but yeah, Seth will do the microphones and stuff for us. And I think Jean, uh, Pam, we're going to see Jean on Wednesday, but to see how she's doing with food. So if people want to donate pies, muffins, brownies, whatever, you know, get a hold of Jean Burnham, please. She's doing coffee and stuff. So we'll see her Wednesday and ask her how she's doing. If we do, we'll need to put, if we need to, we'll put out another push um, from Porch Mormon Facebook. I think Representative White had asked about getting some time to speak on town meeting day. We did send an email. We always allow the representative and anyway, the senators rarely speak. Um, Dick's usually there occasionally, Dick McCormick, but mm -hmm. um, rarely does he speak. Mm -hmm. But 
Uh, Sandy always, always did. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure Kirk. Did you do that in the beginning or under 19? He does that in the beginning. Okay. I yeah. Before we open the meeting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what I thought so, but. And this Kirk. time, Kirk is a registered speaker <laughs> here, so we don't have to ask the right. body's approval of his him speaking, right. which has never been a problem anyway, but I've heard it has been some counts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just, it's, we're all, it's been a while since we've done this, so I'll be a little rusty. We all will, but. Just a reminder that I'll be answering only procedural questions, even though you know that I may know an answer. <laughs> okay. um, you guys will be answering those just so we keep that separation and sure. um, helps me to yep. keep control a little better. Yeah. And we can easily speak on the Australian ballot. I just think that they might have well, procedural questions about that. That's a kind of a procedural thing. Yeah, so they may not, have. Yeah. But if they, yeah. you know, yeah, it'll be so we can answer that too. But yeah. That's what I think it'll be procedural. But no, and then. And you'll go through at the beginning like normal of uh, the procedures of yeah, Robert's yeah. rules and I have a whole. Some of the questions that normally come up about the whatever, seven. Yeah. To cast a ballot, to go yeah. to ballot scene. I have my handy dandy cheat sheet here with all that good stuff on it. So I'll be doing that as, and announcements, general announcements, flag salute. I know there's always one person that makes most of the motions at at uh, town meeting day to cast one ballot. And do we know who that may be this year? Uh, those people are dwindling. I know. Yeah. That's what I'll, I'll, <laughs> if not, a lot of people are going to be sitting there waiting for somebody yeah, to make a motion. Uh, the select board can make motions. Basically, I can entertain a motion. Mm. And put the word out there and make sure it's so move. Gotcha. Yep. Because <laughs> I, I know in past it was it's not it was, it was two or three that would jump at yep. that Man, so fast they have to put each other off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Norm yeah. Case. Yeah. 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 And Carol sometimes too. I think right? Luis yeah. does it quite a bit too. Yeah. yeah. Luis yeah. has been doing something. I would be one who would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I just got wondering. It's been a while. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I would I would assume that you know a fair amount of the individual individuals that'll be there may be newer um, to the process too. So that'll be good. So does, Doug, you just be prepared to make motions on. <laughs> oh, we'll go home and practice. Yeah. <laughs> right. pract just practice in front of the right there. Also, yeah. Right. Oh, that's fine. So. Well, even those little things like you don't think of. Oh yeah, you know, so many times. Yep. I mean, it's the same. You know, two or three people that make all the motions, or, or, or ask the cast one. You know, one ballot, or you know, so. And that's true. <clears throat> so, any question? Any other questions in regards to the town meeting day warning? Okay. So we will just move forward into the budget. And so what I'll do, um, like we've done the other ones, is I'll just kind of take a brief um, uh, overview of the budget, what's kind of the major components that are changing. And then afterwards, if we have any questions in regards to, you know, getting into more of the micro level of the of the budget, then then I can field those questions from anybody. I did. I just remembered, Rick, there is something there's a mistake. Um, page 36 and 37 should be reversed. In the because that's the revenue page somehow. Oh yeah. Right. So I don't know if that's Front something you want to say yeah. that page thirty six and thirty seven should be reversed. Yeah, last page um, revenue. Yeah, yeah, the last page is revenue, first page of the expenses. Somehow we didn't catch it. Got reversed. So I just wanted to that. I think it was last week. Well, maybe it was you who had a question about salt, and then we were like, oh. Oh no! <laughs> but what is town report if there's not at least one mistake? You know, it's... sorry, I meant to mention that. I just flipped mine over and saw I had a note. Sure. All right. Budget wise, the um, so the, you know two parts of the budget: the revenue and the cost into things. The revenue piece of it is the localized revenue um, that we collect. So those are things like, um, you know, zoning fees or dog licenses and uh, money that we get from class highways um, type things. And 
um, that helps offset um, what we have to ask the taxpayers. Usually doesn't change a lot. Um, the the major mover of that, it, it did increase by $56,000 year over year, um, of which $54,560 of it is the sale of the transfer station um, that we completed with Royalton in July. So over the next five years, um, we will have that extra revenue source um, in our budget. So that is the only mover really on the uh, revenue side of things. And the cost side, the cost is up $263,000. And I will go through um, the major components of why that's up. Uh, $35,000 of that is the benefits. So the benefits that we pay our current employees. So those, for the most part, are um, healthcare retirement um, pieces of it. Um, so as we've been, you know, I don't know, every year, mm -hmm. every year there's big jumps. Uh, this year there was 21% jump in healthcare alone. Uh, last year there was a large jump after town meeting day. There was a large jump to retirement. Um, so anybody that's been um, following the retirement up in Montpelier, you know, issues that they're having is there was a large retirement increase that happened um, after town meeting last year. And I wouldn't say it's going down, but it's sustained that high level. So we're carrying that into the next budget as well. Um, I think it's worth saying, too, that when we talk about a 21.5% increase in the health insurance premium that that was approved by the green mountain care board it wasn't like we right. had a choice and in that and, and again it was just another thing approved at state level that was kicked out those, those are items over which we have no control right yeah yeah absolutely. And we, we get a bill and we have to pay it mm -hmm. i mean yeah. it's exactly and and we did do our due diligence like like normal um therese did look at the uh, the only other um health insurance carrier to see if there was any potential of going back to them because we actually were we're with them probably about five years ago before we switched. Yep. And the rates wouldn't have changed enough to to go through the hassle. So we didn't. No, and it was a cut in uh, benefits. So it, this yeah. climate with the employees that you have, it's hard to cut benefits. And so we were trying to compare apples to apples to mm -hmm. see what we could do. And then um, the, the largest mover in the budget, as we've all seen at home, is is the what we call the inflated um, supply end of things. So um of those, salt was the biggest mover in it. Um, so we we use about or budget for about sixty thousand dollars in salt a year, and just the salt budget alone is going to go up almost thirty thousand um, dollars year over year. And of course, that's something that you these budgets are tough because you're projecting out like next winter. So we're trying to figure out what next winter is going to bring. We're just still trying to pay for this winter. Um, so salt is the biggest mover in that. And then the other big movers on that, I think diesel was $35,000. So, yeah. you know, diesel pretty much powers all of our, our, our equipment, mostly for um, winter maintenance. Um, and then things like um, um, heating for, for our buildings and, and um, other pieces of supplies, um, you know, uh, even the things that we um for our equipment ourselves was up like 15 or twenty thousand dollars and just you know things like tires and those types of things so those are um, the inflated piece of it was um the, uh, a very large portion of it the um uh, sixty thousand uh, dollars increases in what we are setting aside for grant matches so <clears throat> the positive piece is that we were able to secure or Therese was able to secure um grant grant funding for four projects throughout town. Um, the first piece that we'll see um, the soonest will be the uh, Christian Hill project. So eight tenths of a mile from the beginning, um, uh, Christian Hill on 107, basically the paved portions of it, we're gonna take it back to dirt, uh, do the necessary drainage improvements and repave the job. Um, so we had a grant for that. So we have to pay for our match. The, um, we also got um, for Sand Hill, um, we talked about the water line project tonight, um, but there is um, drainage improvements um, and pavement and, and whatnot that needs to get redone on Sand Hill. Um, we were able to get a um, an earmark um, through um, Senator Sanders for that, and as well as it comes with a, a portion that the that the town has to match on that. 
So we have 600,000 from him and then we have to match 150. Yeah. Uh, and then Pleasant Street, we, we, um, we have a streetscape sidewalk project that goes from the intersection of Sand Hill and, and Pleasant Street down towards the school. Um, probably won't see anything on that for a year, maybe two. <clears throat> yeah, um, you won't see anything, but the the engineering is, I just sent all my stuff to Rita, so that'll be going out soon. So it, engineering will happen behind the scenes. So. so we'll be redoing the sidewalks on that piece of it. Um, is there any way it's walked on those sidewalks, uh, you know, <laughs> Here's probably this much curb poking up and, you know, the sidewalks about even with the road and, and the walls um, tilted in. Before. Yeah. I mean, so there's it much needed. It's been like that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have uh, a pea vine culvert, uh, which is down by the, the opposite end of Sand Hill um, the intersection there um, that we have a structure grant for to replace yeah. that. And that again, probably won't happen this no. year. It'll be next year. Because we so, have to time that with Sand Hill. We can't close Sand Hill and Peavine at the same time. So we're trying to, that'll go the spring of 24. We also have that brick grant to do the scoping study for a large culvert in yep. Gilead. That's going to go this year. So this and these right grant road. matches are something that we're not taking care of all the money for the grant matches. Now, we've already set aside some money. We're mm -hmm. setting aside some more money. And then next year, we'll set aside you know some more money to yep. go towards that. So um, it's all... You know, um, you know, 80, 20 or 90, 10 type money that yeah. that um, that we get the um, the highway department. We had some changes of uh, the way in which we're doing some um, methods um, due to um, sand and gravel. Um, so one thing we had um, noticed, well, everybody's noticed is that our gravel roads don't have a whole lot of gravel on them anymore. So. Um, so one thing that we are trying to get on is a seven to eight year cycle of, of maintaining our gravel roads. And we have identified that as a section of the budget that we need to increase money, money to do that work. Um, and the other piece of that is sand. So normally we put, um, a native, you know, round stone sand, um, uh, you know, for everybody that's seen sand put down, it, it, you know, it's dark, it looks nice, but doesn't really last very long. Um, so we were working, uh, we spent a little extra money to put some manufactured sand um, into our budget this winter season, as well as next winter season. Um, the benefits to that, that we feel that we're going to get out of that is um, it'll help build some of the road base, even through winter cycles. Um, the, the native round stone sand is usually only good just for a day or two, and then, then it goes to the side of the road and it, it adds no structure to the road. So we're hoping... Um, which so far things look good yeah, and we'll does. continue to get feedback on that is to pay a little bit more for the manufactured sand, but then that's material that will help towards our gravel roads base. The other thing too is the or is the sand that we've spread in the past since it's dark colored, has a lot of organics, it can get a little slimy. So one of the things we have heard is people think that we're not sanding, but we are sanding. It's just, it's a different color. You're used to seeing the dark uh, sand we've used with a lot of organic material so it's this darker you can't miss it but the stuff we're putting down now the manufactured sand is lighter in color so people are calling and I actually heard Pam giving that explanation the other day saying no actually it's a manufactured sand so it looks all different so people we are sanding um just the product looks different on the road yeah. and, and it has other good prop properties too oh, sure. like for instance when we go through those freeze thaw cycles um, you'll still see that you know if you go it freezes at night and it thaws during the daytime and it freezes back up the next night instead of having to go back out and resand that you'll see that those stone chip particles are still encased into that product a little better um the um the constable wise we had quite a bit of discussion at the select board level over the last year of of uh, you know so our dedicated service to, to the town is um or what we budget for is 20 hours a week of coverage and the challenge that we've had over the last couple of years is for so many years, we either shared resources with a neighboring town um, with a constable, or we have constables that have a full-time job somewhere else. And then they come and do what we'd call overtime here in Bethel. And uh, just like most of the labor force um, in around Vermont and the United States is mm -hmm. the last couple of years that these individuals that that normally come and provide um, assistance to us during their off hours 
they're not getting that off hours. So it's, they're on either mandatory overtime for their departments or their department shorthanded so they don't have any time to spend with us. And then the other piece that we looked at is um, if they do have time, you know, they can pick up shifts for uh, higher income where they're at rather than come to Bethel. So, so, um, so we looked a little bit this, um, this past year on some options, some options where, um, you know, having potentially the Windsor County Sheriff's Department come in and do some patrolling for us a few times a week. Um, we did find out that that, that amount is our, our typical budgets around $50,000 for a constable. So just to have Windsor County Sheriff's come in would be about 125,000. So it's, it would have been a significant increase in our budget. Um, so what we decided as a select board to do was uh, reach back out to our existing two constables. Um, we have decided to increase the rate that we're going to pay to be more competitive with what they are getting now to attract them to, to do the hours when, when they have them and uh, reach out to them and get a, um, an understanding of, we want you to do yeah, 10 hours a piece or 20 time, hours yeah. or, you know, so, um, so, so far so good on that. Um, yeah. I've seen an uptick. I just did payroll today for D3 and they were both working. And so we're trying to kind of work in the middle rather than go to the extreme. Um, and, and probably some of the extremes that you've seen is, you know, Rochester has decided to go and do some um, uh, Windsor County Sheriff patrolling. So their budget has drastically increased. Did they go with Windsor or Orange? I, th I thought it was Windsor they were going with. They did so, go with Windsor? So they typically, I think, have like Orange. 10 or 15,000. Like, yeah. Oh, or Addison. They were talking to Addison. Yeah, maybe they ended up going with Windsor. So they increased their budget drastically to do that. Of course, Rochester's budget's a lot smaller. And then, you know, our neighbors to the north, they have um, or had uh, Orange County uh, doing their patrolling for the last three or four years, maybe. Or more, yeah. And uh, there's the Orange County Sheriff um, didn't get reelected. So there's a new sheriff. They lost 11 of 17 deputies in the area. So Randolph's actually looking at going back to doing their own police department. And their, just their uh, budget, from what I was reading the paper, was going to go from Four hundred and forty thousand dollars to seven hundred and something thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. it was drastically going to increase to 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 do their own services again. So I did have a conversation with the town manager and uh, Randolph Trevor and I talked last week and talked about Bethel was doing, what mm -hmm. they were doing, what the situation was, and hopefully um, in the spring or summer that he wanted to know if people were interested in and perhaps a like a regional contracting and I said yes actually yeah. Bethel had talked about that a little bit and would be interested so I did tell him I guess they'd talked a little bit to Northfield and mm -hmm. different places they were talking to different towns and I said yeah if somebody could house it and we could kind of almost do it like the ambulance where you pay for you know per call or per capita or whatever I said we would definitely I said at least be interested in having a conversation so he said he'd get in touch with me the spring early summer whatever and when trying to get together to start thinking about that so you know there's a big shortage so it might be something that we could um work mm -hmm. with him to to do so yeah we, i mean we, options you know we kind of got lucky for so many years yeah. where we shared resources with other communities so you know you're not paying for all the training or all the travel time or or different pieces mm -hmm. of it you're sharing a, a third of it or a quarter of it so yeah well, you might you might also just want to say that the 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 duties or the ex or the training and licensing server expectations for a constable have increased significantly over the years yeah oh, absolutely. so that we're really talking about police coverage mm -hmm. we're not talking about just a constable it's and true. so that's that's something that i i think the citizen would appreciate knowing yeah, absolutely. Because you're right. Years ago, it was it could be anybody, but now they have to have gone through at least the part time academy, and There's so they have to be, and training. They have to be police certified. Now. And... Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Well, and, the, and another thing we had talked about as well is you know being in Bethel, we we've always kind of been under the um, umbrella of you know Vermont State Police, so we kind of always think of that they're kind of patrolling our mm -hmm. area which they did a lot, you know, we, yeah. at times we had one or two deputies that lived in and around our area that patrolled, 
but again, their, their forces are strained as well. They're farther away now. Um, so we don't see their services quite as much as well. So it's kind of a lot of, um, a lot of things that have kind of bottled up here over the last few years. That's made it more difficult to provide service in, in the town. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess this is kind of our last effort of tr trying to find something in the middle before we have to do something drastic and we're trying to avoid that. So we're hoping that this oh. method will work. It also gives us a chance to see what's going to sugar out with Orange County and Windsor County Sheriff's too. They're both brand new. So it'll give us a chance. Uh, of course, the Windsor County Sheriff, uh, Chris and I met with, and he had, you know, some great ideas and hopefully they come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll be able to see, you know, give them a year or so for growing pains to figure out yeah. how it's going for us and what's going for them too. So the, um, uh, the percentage wise, the, the biggest mover in our, our, um, our budget was the White River Valley ambulance. So for, for many years, you know, the White River Valley ambulance might move by a percent or something like that a year or two um, this year. They, and this is based on like $125,000 a year budget. And, um, you know, they've gone up $26,000 this year. So, you know, there's a significant um, increase there. And, and a lot of the same thing, if you go through in the, um, in the book, um, you can go through and see, if you look at the numbers, a, a majority of the numbers are things like, you know, they're having to pay for service, uh, um, the healthcare costs, you know, the pension costs, um, just like we are for our employees, as well as to to find and attract um, individuals that are accredited to do, you know, EMTs and things. They're they're having to pay a little bit more for them as well. So pretty much most of the increase that they had um, all centers around those pieces. Um, and then the last twenty two thousand dollars of the increases are things that are just the normal things that um, that we usually look at. Um, some of that was some of the appropriation money. So we had increased some appropriation money for um, the library. Um, it, you know, we used to be at $2,500 a year on the library. Last year we went to $5,000 and then this year we went to $7,500. Um, you know, supplies, um, there's money in there for, for wage increases for our employees. Um, and, you know, and then a lot of the, you know, a lot of the little stuff that's in and around there. So what that means for us and and this is where uh, as we found out over the years rick right that um, sometimes the way the warning goes can be very um, confusing because <clears throat> you have like if you look at the warning on uh, on article 10 you have you you have the budget and then you have um three or four ar articles that we have after it that are additions to the budget um so it, it can be a little confusing as we've seen in the past where somebody thinks they're adding something, they deleted something or <laughs> it gets pretty wild. Um, so if the base budget, so that doesn't include, doesn't include any of um, the other items, which would be, uh, it, so, it, so the base budget would, wouldn't include, um, wouldn't include article 11, 12, or, 15. So those are the right. The, the add ons. Is White River Ambulance one of those extras? I don't think so. Well, it is, but we kind of figure it's a, it's a normal. Yeah. It, it's on the warning every year, kind of like human services. Yeah, it's not in that number. So we kind of think it yeah, as more like the. You may be contributing to the confusion if you report that that's one of the reasons the budget's going up when that's not part of the base budget. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to sit down and say how many cents to somebody. It's clear on page 54. I think if people look at 54, they'll be able to see, you know, what's broken out at where the um, human services, Warva, Bethel Library, Recreation, and then it gives a estimated tax. So I think maybe 54 will help make it clear if we refer people to page 54. Might help. This it helps me when I look at it. <laughs> um, so there's so that. So the um, if you if you include um, ten and thirteen and fourteen 
which are the typical three that's on every year's warning, then that would be an increase to us of 2.3 cents. So um, the cents, what that equates to is um, if you have a, and, and we base it on the average home value of a Bethel residence. So the average home value of a Bethel residence, $250,000. So if yours is a little higher than that, then you pay a little bit more. And if yours is a little lower than that, you pay a little bit a little bit less than that. So that um, tax tax bill wise is, is roughly about $58 that you pay more in taxes for, for the year on that. The, the add-ons, so the add-ons would be um, article 11 for the library, article 12 for the skate park and article 15 for the playhouse. If those were all voted in together, that's an extra 2.8 cents. So that'd be an extra $70. So on a $250,000 home, um, that total amount would be about $130 more in taxes that you would spend for the year. Um, and then if you're trying to break it down by each one, so about every $21,000 of budget up or down is about a penny uh, on the tax rate. Um, so on those. The, uh, we probably won't go over on town meeting day as much as we will tonight, but <clears throat> so normally if we would have looked at this budget, um, I mean, we're probably close to um, with everything right now, we're saying if, if everything here was, was approved, you're, you're about five cents increase. The, the budget before you is probably really closer to like a 10 cent increase. Now, there were some factors that helped drive it down this year. Um, so the grand list has has continued to increase. So the grand list is based on property values. Um, so like last year, for instance, we had um, proposed to the uh, taxpayers a two cent increase um, that ended up being, I think, virtually nothing. Um, and the reasons why it offset it was that <clears throat> the um, that the grand list had rose enough to offset the difference. Um, again, this year, it's good that that's happening, but at some point, the grand list won't. And, and we're just seeing, you know, the property taxes or the property values have, have uh, as Rick knows, have had skyrocketed here in the last year and a half, two years. Um, so that's helped soften the blow that we have. The other piece that helped um, save us about two cents on the tax rate was the um, transfer station uh, revenue that we have. So that revenue is only stuff that we have for five years. So um, anything greater than five years on that, um, which for the most part, what we talked about as a board is the transfer station monies and stuff that we kind of used for our matching grant funds. So things that wouldn't be prolonged out longer than five years there are things because if you if at the end of five years if you're still hoping that for revenue then then your budget's going to go up even farther so um, those are some things that are offsetting <clears throat> the 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 grand list um usually on a normal year doesn't move much it it stays about the same so we've had two years in a, in a row of significant value increase of the grand list and as you know, Rick's probably, you know, this year in the real estate market, it seems like it's kind of starting to plateau a little bit. Not much is happening because yeah. there's no, a very few properties available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so there's a good chance that the, the grand list will plateau. Mm -hmm. um, the only caveat to that is that I know there's a number of new homes being built, mm -hmm. which will. It's true. It, we, Kelly was processing zoning permits today. I mean, aside from our two for the water project, um, you know, subdivision and I'm a shed. I mean, she acted, it was funny because she's like, I said, must be, I don't know, the cold weather all of a sudden, but people are thinking, praying for spring and starting to see more zoning permits. So what, you know, and, so and we will be going, we will be going through a reappraisal in town. Um, so this is something that we have been talking about um, the process for, over two years now um, that we are contracted. So uh, we will start the process um, 
and um, it's usually about a year and a half, two yeah. year process. Um, so what that will do is help because because real estate values have have changed so much. So for instance, if you're building a house right now, that value, you, you know, let's say I'm building a brand new house and I'm right next to Dave's house that's been there for 20 years. And let's say they're even similar houses. My property might be valued more than Dave's property just because of of the new newness to it. So yeah. So my my I'm probably getting taxed higher than Dave is, even though we might have the same square footage and the whole, you know, same acreage and whatnot. Um and then on the flip side of that, you may have people that have made updates to their home since the last reappraisal that was done 15 plus years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so um, ago. that may be getting taxed at a little bit lower rate. Um, and then a, a majority of people really won't see a, a difference because the reappraisal is just resetting the baseline yeah, that, the, we, their, that we set our tax. Their house on. value will go up, but because the grant list goes up, the taxes won't. The tax be, level comes down. Unless so someone it, goes on it a should offset each other. Spree, but, you know, so. but, but, you know, you're going to start seeing things like those spikes in the grand list that are kind of helping us right now aren't, aren't, aren't foreseeable. Um, However, <laughs> Odequichi is sponsoring a series about climate migration. And have you, did you get that information? And I've heard that as it's worth, worth looking at. Uh, we have people in Bethel who came here because they got tired of eating the smoke out in the West. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except for there's no more places in Bethel. Well, that, that may be, can't, but they may, they, they, they may build. Right. They may but build. They, they may build. I mean, and that's. are subdividing. So and yeah. and so we're going to, we may, or I wouldn't look for prices to go down. I, I guess yeah. it's, I, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look for that. Yeah, you may be maybe true because there was a you're talking with realtors. There was the pandemic and then there was the political refugees from Florida and Texas. Mm -hmm. And then there were the, the climate refugees. So that's. Yeah, yeah. And, and those and, are real drivers. Yeah, it's, so it's it, yeah. it's a moving target for sure. Uh, but I, looking at what's going on with, you know, what Otaquichi is planning for and mm -hmm. urging us to plan for yep. is something different. Right. And the good thing is we're addressing some things right now with the, obviously with the water project, because we can't add any new users to the right. system till the bond boat passes and the water project right. goes the state until we install that booster pump station at crystal drive. The state has says they won't allow us to add any more users. And, um, so we need to get that done. Um, and the planning commission is, uh, working with two rivers to update our zoning regulations to make, um, some allow for, you know, an increased density and, so, you know, we're certainly taking some right steps to, mm -hmm. to address that. Public hearing in April, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. We'll find out on the 16th, I guess, or the 13th, whatever day that is our next PC meeting. And the school will be doing their informational budget meeting Wednesday night. So, um, which right now, I know the town school are different, but uh, right now, the town of Bethel is looking at about a half a cent increase at the at the um, school level. Um, and again, what um, what's happening at the school level is almost opposite of what's happening at the town level. So the um, the real estate um, hit is actually a negative on the on the um, on the education end of things. So. Um, at the town level, it's it's kind of a, a, a base system. So you have your grand list. Your grand list is um, the value of, of your property. Um, and then at the school, there's a multi-tier calculation to figure out your, um, your tax rate. So um, there's a combination of what the state pays you for every kid. So they, they set a value of 15 or 16 or $17,000 per pupil that that is there for a year. Um, this year that went up, which was good because the more money per pupil that the state gives you, potentially the less tax that you'll pay in. 
Um, and then the state has a, a bond yield, which the yield, the yield kind of coincides with, with the real estate market. Um, so as anybody knows that um, how we pay for education is based on um, real estate and it's not based on income tax in Vermont. So that being that real estate has gone up, that the yield has gone up at a drastic rate. So the the um, the budget they were they were going to put forward would actually have been an eight to ten cent savings for our town, a little less than Randolph. But then what happens is then they take in the common level of appraisal value. So uh, an even baseline for common level of appraisal is a hundred percent. Um, and right now Bethel is eighty eight percent. So and what that means is usually once you get to about 85%, it triggers an automatic automatic um, reappraisal process. So we're on the bottom end of that. So as it goes down in a neg negative value, it negatively affects your tax rate on the educational piece of it. So where we could have been getting eight or 10 cents back, we're, we're gonna pay in like a half a cent. So we're, we're, we're here at the town, it helps you yeah. <laughs> at the, <laughs> to, school at the school end of things, it goes the other way. So oh, it's, it's very convoluted. But um, I mean, overall, right now, you know what we're looking at is you know half a cent at the at the um, educational piece of it, and then you know the town right now, the base base bid, you know, based amount with the White River Valley Ambulance and the Human Services is two two point three cents, and then there's a potential of another two point eight cents worth of increases for the library the skate park and the playhouse so and of course too we can't say how that affects anybody if they're getting a prebate or anything like right. that so that certainly doesn't take that into consideration that's something that's between you and the state of vermont so so joanne did you have any specific questions about the budget that you had do you want to ask really, okay that veteran line there Sure. The veterans um, exemption is well, something that you voted on years ago at town meeting to allow $40,000 so per veteran. So it has, I believe um, that the veteran has to be, I don't know if it's over 80 to 100% disabled and they qualify for that through the state of Vermont. And then the state sends us a list of those veterans or widows of those veterans. And what happens is they get $40,000 taken off a reduction of the value of their property. So if their property is worth 240,000, we subtract the 40,000, they're only taxed on the 200,000, but the town uh, has to, residents of the town have to make up the school tax portion. That's part of your local agreement rate. So the 560,000 a year. Yep. That's the 40,000 times X number. Of yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the local agreement rate covers that as well as any um, special exemptions, which in Bethel is just the Grange, okay. something that you vote on. So that's what that is. Yeah. And that's that's town only. Yeah. That's just town only. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the school tax gets calculated my, on that reduction rate, and then mm -hmm. we pay the, we just have to pay the school tax value. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, I think the other thing I mentioned too is that this budget that we're talking about does not go into ah, effect right. until July of 2023. It doesn't start instantly. We still have about, about halfway or so through last year's budget that was approved. This one go, kicks in July 1st. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a silly question? For general knowledge, um, there's in uh, parks and public space places. Mm -hmm. There's money for Stonewall, which where's that? That Stonewall out there, sixteen thousand we've paid so far oh. to have that refurbished. That's yeah, okay. that yeah. one. Thank you. You are welcome. Yeah, that Stonewall is a little more expensive than yeah. Than what we <laughs> maintaining it. Yeah, yeah. So we've done a couple. You we know, had, pieces yeah, you had the ends and then the, ends, then yeah. the stairwell pieces that mm -hmm. needed some attention. Oh, really, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. he did a nice job. Yeah, yeah he really definitely well. did a nice job. Mm -hmm. yep. We're running into Dave's. I was looking to see if there was list. any hands. Let's see. Um, 
Wait, somebody said something. Hang on. The chat. She said the walls. Looks oh, amazing. the wall looks amazing so far. Lily. Yep. Yes. Thank you. We think so. Yeah. So it's eight o'clock. It's pushing up on Dave's time. <laughs> pushing on <his> own over. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry, you get a pass. We wouldn't get started till 6 30. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, we get plenty of cookies to go. So. Oh, that's, oh, right. that's right. It's all on cookie time tonight. That's right. Yeah. So any other questions in regards to the town meeting day activities, um, warning or budget? I think they're still looking for volunteers for pies. Mm -hmm. So um, call, anybody call Jean. wants to donate a pie. Bring it in, pies, cookies, bread muffins. She has to take all sorts of stuff. I know we had talked about the last meeting about, um, or maybe it was the last two meetings ago about um, our spacing of our chairs and things like that this year, um, helping out with some of that. Yeah, I don't know. Pam was going to talk to, um, Sherry talked to Mr. Hubble. They set up for us. They're very nice. They set okay. up for her. So she's got that under control. And, and usually we have plenty of space, especially on the bleacher wise. The bleachers don't usually get very full. So there's always, you kind of can move move around how you want want to do that. Um, you can set up half the gym and close the curtains. <laughs> Just a pet peeve of mine. I can't hear you. Yeah. We'll move the <laughs> yeah. It's always fun. All right. Well, there'll be a couple mics out there so people can get up and go to the mic and <laughs> okay. All right. Um, town manager's report. So good news finally on the international that's been up at Clark's. So ended up that they did get a hold of international corporate and we are getting a new motor They're at their cost. They're installing that. So the truck is still there. We're waiting for that to be delivered. They're going to deal with it. Um, there still is a part that we're waiting for that they can't get um but they have another truck that they can't either so we're we've also reached out to the state and some other people that deal with internationals to see if we can locate it on our own to take it up there to have them right. install it but that is good news that they're going to install it um that they're going to deal with the motor and so that should be so they'll be taking care of that so that was good news morgan came in and told me that last week um, we finally hired someone for to fill our full-time position on the road crew, so it won't be just Morgan and AJ any longer for full-time. So um, very excited to bring Todd Ashley on board, and he starts on March 20th. Um, and then I think I just told you in the town manager's report, we have you know just about what I have out to bid for properties. Um, we've met with Mike Maynard, all that that you know. Um, I did tell you, had mentioned last week about that Tim Mills had done this for me a while ago, um, the water construction phases. And um, so I had Mike Maynard look at it. So obviously we did the $2.8 million. We're doing the Sand Hill now. And then we had three other um, sections to be done. And I, we talked a little bit about to Mike about it when Richard and I met with him last week. And his suggestion is, uh, you know, we may end up, depending on where breaks are combining some of these a little bit differently or doing a bigger project. But he did say that we should be really thinking about completing our third project five years prior to our bond paying off in 2031 to take advantage of the best chance of receiving any state subsidy, because oh, right. it will, you know, just the way that it's going to play out as far as they look at your debt and then they take the it to median household income and what the rates are. And, you know, it's, it's, it seems like it's always a financing game, but certainly I did tell him that we were interested in doing this project and then getting probably another planning loan and rolling into another project just because when you have presidential elections and things like that, you sometimes they come up with money to do infrastructure. And a lot of times they want you to be shovel ready. So if you're shovel ready, sometimes you can get more money. So kind of depends. But um, so we did talk a little bit about that on Wednesday and, and I put that you know, in your packet. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a lot of things Chris said is out to bid. Uh, VHB will be making an amendment on Pinello Bridge contract. Have some other stuff out, hoping to get our um, RFP for municipal project management for the VOREC grant out this week. Um, 
three properties that we sold at tax sale uh, did not get redeemed. So we issued, um, uh, del you know, delinquent tax collector deeds. So those are now out and uh, those properties have been taken over by the person who bought them at tax sale and any delinquent taxes that had occurred since the, since the prior tax sale have been paid in full. So, and um, so we definitely are, so anyway, so those three didn't redeem. So we sent about $32,000 uh, to the state for unclaimed property because we don't, there was some, you know, one's in a state without a will and the other one was um, same sort of situation. So that money has been sent to the state of Vermont and to unclaimed property. So anybody and the other property, there was an amount left of over $3,000 and we divided that amongst the two owners and have mailed them checks. So the person who owns the property, if there's a bid that goes over the sale price, they get that money back. Mm -hmm. The town doesn't. So all that money has been um, distributed. Nice. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. And select board meeting minutes from the 20th of February. Long time ago. Good. Good. To, uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. <laughs> All right. And um, we did have some a couple of things in there from other communication. Um, the Bethel Energy Committee was the only one I saw. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yep. And any other business to come before the board? I just want to thank Paul for his his years of service to the board. Um, you know, he's free of the ball and chain. And <laughs> Six years? Can yeah. Yeah. No, we appreciate it. It's been great. Yeah, it's been terrific. I'll I'll be speaking a little more at town meeting, but just for the public that's tuned in now, I just want to say thank you um, to this particular board, plus Carl Russell and Mo Brigham were also on the board when I first got started. And uh, it's been a real pleasure and honor to work with this group. When the, we first decided, when it was first decided to go to five person board, there was a lot of discussions. You're never going to get five people to agree on uh, anything how this is not never going to work and it's been the exact opposite it's been nothing but finding consensus we've had discussions we've had vocal discussions we've had you know but we've always will consent construct <laughs> yeah and uh but we've always been able to come up with a consensus uh for the good of the town so thank you folks yeah definitely agree with that i mean it it's nice because we have, you know, five board members from a little bit different walks of life. And I think it just goes to show what you can do when you don't have, you know, a political agenda or something like that. It's just about being open-minded and being prepared to um, compromise and, and have the will of the people first in mind. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've even had to ever do a tiebreaker vote. I mean, it's, Usually we find, you know, we might be on one side of the issue or the other, but then eventually we, you know, we figure out something in the middle and we're all able to yep. come together on that. So it has been nice. Now, however, I will say that we, we are ha still having difficulties with volunteers for committees. Um, you know, people on the select board aren't going to be here forever. So, um, you know, so anybody that is, you know, willing or able or you know you know setting in and, and, and just kind of going over the select board uh meetings it's you know there's really no special um degree or skill set that you really need other than just being you know open and honest and fair and well, compromising and right Right. Yeah, planning commission needs people and yeah. uh, the energy committee and lots of all and, the and usually with you know towns like especially the committees you'll see these waves like a 
uh, you know, something, it's usually something happens and then there's a peak of lots of people that want to help. And then there's a valley. And I think, you know, we're kind of getting into that valley again where we're, we're happy and everybody's kind of happy. And so we're not really thinking about, you know, that, that um, we really need to be out there helping out. And um, cause you know, again, there, you know, what, select board's not really designed to be on it forever. I mean, you know, there's at times people that are on it for decades, but it's really not meant for that. It's meant to, you know, fill in, have some service for, you know, a few years and then somebody else comes and takes your spot. So, um, so definitely any, hmm. still use more volunteers or anybody yeah. wants to run for stuff or that's school right. or, or anything else that's in the community, so. That's right. Put right. out a big sign. We need you. We have a little Uncle Sam point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Make a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. All right. Second. Yep. Second, Dave. 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 All in favor? All right. All right. All right.